In this video, we're going to take a look at Organic Studios Jules Verne Nautilus. Let's jump straight to the end with my opinion on this thing. This blue is completely unpredictable. The tone changes a lot as it dries and is much lighter in general than what you get in the swatch. It changes a lot by tone in what pen it's in, what paper it's on. It's an interesting blue that's going to keep you on your toes without a doubt. If you like a lot of very different blues, you get a bunch right here. With that, it's interesting and it's fun to use. It is definitely a unique blue worth trying out a lot. It's, again, it's going to be so different throughout this entire thing that you're going to swear I'm a liar and I've got like 30 different blues inked up. And I don't. It's all the same ink. Very interesting to use. I like to change things up by using a different pen each day. Today that pen is a Noodler's Nib Creeper with a Fude Nib. It's inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. To see how I arrived at that opinion, let's take a look at the first writing sample done on Claire Fontaine. Looking at the medium nib, we get a mid dusty tone kind of blue here and as you watch it really watch as it changes drying now it's not feathering it's not spreading there is very light amount light amounts of shading that are showing up from time to time you'll see it on e at the end of five in the second line in the third line in frederick you'll see that the cross of the f the d the k all a bit darker. The was going to get dar or lighter to darker. Pretty nice. Looking at the broad nib, this is lighter than we had with the medium and doesn't look like a blue leaning turquoise. It looks like a very light powdery blue. It's not feathering. It's not spreading. It is offering a little bits of shading. The shading that's going on here is very gentle. Look at Russia in the second line. Starts a little darker, works its way a little lighter and darker again. Same thing happens with which it's pretty neat. Looking at the stub nib, this is the darkest tone on the page. It's going to hold on to much of that darker tone better than the other nibs did. It didn't feather. It didn't spread. The shading is much better here than it is on either of the other two. And it's only in the beginning of the writing where really the pen had sat for a couple days where it's at its darkest. Looking as it moves forward, you see that it really sort of stabilizes more in the tones you're going to see. Looking at the back of the page, you see that we get no ghosting, no bleeding. We would be surprised if it did. 
To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Kaweco Sport with a medium nib. A Kaweco Sport with a broad nib. A Kaweco Sport with a 1.5 stub. The next writing sample is done in a Field Notes Steno Notebook. Looking at the medium nib, it is very close to what we got on the Clairefontaine, but just a little bit darker. Now, it's not feathering, it's not spreading, it is not shading, it's kind of, an, it looks like a very, very light blue-black in kind of its tone. Not like weird to describe because a lot of times those blue blacks go into the dark blues but it looks like it's trying to be a blue black maybe looking at the broad nib it is just a tad bit darker than we had with the Clairefontaine paper. Now, this is feathering a little bit, and it is spreading a little bit. It made me a little bit worried about how this paper may perform. It was really, like, sucking into that page. We're not getting any kind of shading. We're just getting this interesting little bit darker than baby blue. Looking at the stub nib, it is darker than the broad. It is quite a bit lighter than we had on the Clairefontaine. Definitely a different kind of blue than what was with the medium. I have three different blues here on the page from the same ink. Now, it's feathering like a beast. It spreads. Yeah. It's not shading. It really doesn't look good in performance. The tone's not any kind of a real problem. Performance is not good. Looking at the back of the page, where the performance was worst with the stub, it also has a lot of bleed very heavy into the paper, but not through the paper. We see a lot of the ghosting in general. I don't know if you could use the back of this page, but none of it touched the page underneath. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The next writing sample is done in an Ampad Steno Notebook. Looking at the medium nib, the tone of this paper really did change it. It's a little bit darker than we had on the last paper. Now, we are getting the tiniest bit of feathers that sometimes show themselves. You see it in the A of and, first word. You see it in the TE of intellectual on the second line. It shows itself little bits here and there, not the end of the world. The spread is re relatively under control, and there's no shading here. Just a different kind of blue. Looking at the broad nib, the tone of the paper, with the lighter tone that we've been getting with this, gets it to almost be a kind of turquoise, something to be aware of in a professional environment. This might cause a little bit of a problem for you, even though it is blue. It's not feathering. So as it seems to be going down a little bit lighter, it's not feathering, it's not spreading, it's not shading, but it's not quite that blue. It's a little bit of a turquoise here. Looking at the stub nib, the darkest tone on the page, without a doubt, it does have some very light feathering. It's not really spreading. It's doing fairly nice with that. The tone I find to be pretty good as an overall, if you were using this with a stub on this type of paper, you wouldn't have to worry about it. So it's about matching that kind of flow to what you need. It's not shading at all. It's just a blue. Unimpressive in this case. 
looking at the back of the page, you see that we get a lot of places that it comes quite deep into the paper, but never comes through and touches the page underneath. I don't think you could use the back of the page for much of this, except maybe the medium. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. This smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. And here we see the results of the resistance test. The next writing sample is done in a national steno notebook. Looking at the medium nib, we are getting a lighter tone, quite a bit lighter than we had with the Claire Fontaine. And we're getting a green leaning turquoise here a little bit. Fun ink, really keeps you on your toes. It's not feathering, it's not spreading, it is offering spots of shading. On that third line, you see the starts a bit lighter, gets darker. Math goes lighter to darker to lighter to darker. Doing very nice. Looking at the broad nib, quite a bit lighter than we had with the medium. Now it's not feathering, it's not spreading, it is shading some, but as I said in the very beginning, the most remarkable thing with this ink has been what's going on with its tone. Very different tone of what's going on where the last one was a little bit of a turquoise. This is very much a light blue and there's a something about it. So if you can nail that down, help me out by all means. Looking at the stub nib, it is similar in tone, but darker than what we had with the broad. No feather, no spread. It's shading, it's shading fairly well. I think it does very nice here. It holds on to the fact that it is a blue. This is a toned paper, but it's not really a yellow tone, but it's kind of yellow-ish, which is affecting what we're seeing. Looking at the back of the page, you see that the ghosting is way under control. You can easily use the back of the page and there is no bleed through touching the page underneath. With over a thousand inks reviewed, let's take a look at some color comparables. Here is Ackerman's number one. Here is Colorverse Cat. Here is Levenger Blue Bahama. Here is Sailor Niori Sumiri. The next writing sample is done in an Office Depot steno notebook. Looking at the medium nib, we get something that looks like a desaturated version of what we got from the Claire Fontaine with the medium. It's not feathering. It's not spreading. There's definitely shading that's happening here. And while sometimes it comes on very strong and you see it very easily, you see it in his on the top line, you'll see it in the on the third line, but on the second line, it's very gentle in and out like book, gets a little bit lighter right at the O, makes it look like eyes looking at you. Looking at the broad nib, we get the return of that kind of turquoise look of this color, but still very blue leaning, but very light in tone. Now, we're not getting much for feathering. There is a little bit of feathering. You see it in the Tremendous. You see it in, well, pretty much Tremendous. But that's where it just stuck out at me. No real spread. Some very light shading. Only a, a light speckling of it throughout. Ooh. 
looking at the stub nib, we get a darker version of what we had with the broad. Definitely a very blue leaning turquoise in this case, darker version. It is not feathering, it is not spreading, it is offering some shading. I think the shading standing out a little bit better here than it did with the broad. The stub nibs can often help for that to happen. When you look at the first word, without starts lighter, gets darker at the H, lighter into the OU and dark at the T, shading nicely. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleed through, nothing touches the page underneath. Ghosting is way under control. I think you could use the back of this page. While it's nice to find other inks in the same color family, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. Here is a shimmering pink ink by Diamine, their Pink Glitz. Here is an orange ink by Diamine, their Coral. Here is a magenta ink by Robert Oster, their Burgundy. Here is a yellow ink by Califolio, their Hori Dori. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. Looking at the medium nib, it's not looking to be the same kind of tones that we were getting from this medium on any of the other papers, though certainly a blue. It does feather the slightest bit, doing really very well. There's the tiniest bit of spread, but again, a very well. I think it's doing awesome here. No real shading. I think this could be a good ink for this paper. Looking at the broad nib, we get a much, much lighter tone. Nowhere like the baby blue that we had in some of those first writing samples. It does feather. It's much more noticeable here. It does spread. I don't think that using this particular nib with this ink on this paper is a good match. It's not shading. I guess you technically could do it. Just write really big and really fast. Looking at the stub nib, we get the same kind of blue, a little bit darker than we had in the broad. It feathers, of course. It spreads, of course. It doesn't really shade, and we shouldn't expect shading. Looking at the back of the page, we see that the ghosting is very heavy. You can't use the back of the page. You might get away with it with the medium. There was no bleed through that touched the page underneath. So what nib and pen do I think is going to give the best writing experience with this ink? This is so hard to nail down. It is a great candidate for dealer's choice where I think you can ink anything up and get a really good experience from it. But I think this is best used in as many different pens with different flows, different nib sizes as you can ink up because they will all be different and experiment with some of those papers because you are going to find that match that is absolutely perfect. If there is a blue you will like, you will find it with this ink. I hope you got something out of this video, and if it leads to you wanting to try this ink when you purchase it, let the retailer know where you heard about it, whether it's me or any other channel. Thanks for watching.